notes down and this video is just a standalone video so it's not a part of a, a playlist series um, and it's a video to show you uh, how to refactor the standard templates uh, character what the controls are in the character uh, I should be in the controller rather than the character. So this is a video that's been asked for in some comments uh, on some of my other videos. Um, and to to give the context of what's going on here, um, this is third, a third-person template. The same stuff here will apply to the first-person template. Uh, I'm not as familiar with the other templates. Um, and uh, uh, Epic's uh, a general advice about using uh, characters and uh, sort of controllable characters and controllers is that you put all the, the handling of the controller and then pass it uh, pass on instructions to uh, the uh, the pawn that is being controlled um, and it's it's very understandable why this is the case because this this pawn and uh, controller allows for all sorts of useful things to, to happen. So it allows uh, for you to be able to, if somebody's connection drops, uh, just plug an AI in, in place. It allows an uh, easy switch between different control systems in, uh, in different control uh, uh, paradigms. So if you if you're at all familiar with the Grand Theft Auto series of games, uh, you'll know that you can run around uh, whilst you're uh, in a character and then you get into a car and the control system changes. Um, and it does so seamlessly. And um, one way of helping that happen is to do uh, is to actually handle the controls inside the controller, which is where they're meant to be handled. Somehow, or for some reason, in the uh, templates, uh, haven't done this um, and it's I believe it's a little bit of an oversight on their part uh, and uh, like I say I've been asked for a video on how to do refactoring to, to make it make it be as it should be so um, we're going to do that so we'll have a quick look at the third person character so this is where the offending stuff is uh, so this is uh, so the third person character is the is this mannequin it's all the stuff to do with movement uh, but it's also directly controls in here now it's um, it's using no I don't want to go there it's using the um, the new control paradigm for um, 5 which uses the enhanced local input player system uh, which is a little bit weird at the moment. I assume at some point they're going to improve uh, the way that this is dealt with. It's still doing direct stuff uh, to handle controls, but it is suggested that it is better to use this three things than doing direct controls. Then in context, in terms of actions, maybe using a jump action, action or a move action, and the mapping context binds them to the use, and uh, they are, you can't see my hands, but I'm using WASD, you can actually also use the arrow keys, um, and there's lock, which allows you to change the camera, so let's get into the character. First thing is that actually uh, you need to tell the Nothing needs to cast. I don't know. I've just thought of that. Uh, and then gets a component, which is that 
enhance local subsystem, subsystem checks that it's valid and adds the mapping context, which is uh, IMC default. So if I disconnect this, uh, when you're unsure, it's always better to disconnect rather than delete. Um, hopefully this will show that it's no longer working. I've broken it. Yeah. And, well, you can't see that I'm picking buttons and moving the mouse, but uh, trust me, I am. Um, and it's not doing what it should do. Uh, so what we need to do is to put this, and in fact, all of these bits of scripts, we're going to move them into the into a player controller. There is not a bespoke player controller in here when we look in third person. Blueprints, we've got the character and the mode. Now, I don't want to spend ages explaining the character and the mode. I've done those in other videos. Um, please go off and find them if you're if you're confused about those, and it's worth understanding these things. In, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new class which is derived from the player controller, so blueprint class, player controller, and I'm just going to use the same naming paradigm that they've used, so bp underscore third person uh, got another one, I don't know, player controller. Now, by default, this controller isn't being used. It's using the normal uh, unaltered controller. And the, the place to change that is inside the game mode. So just double-click that, bring that up. And um, we can see here, player controller class. And when I click on that, the new player controller that I've created, the choice is there. So I'm going to hook that in. And... Uh, I'm going to open that up for edit and control it. This is it. And go back to, let's close the game mode down and get the character. So I'm just going <coughs> to grab hold on this. Copy and paste it across. Copy and paste is useful. Uh, this is going to be hooked into the event begin play like it is in the um, uh, in the character and so what we don't know need is this cast to player controller because we don't need to grab the handle to the player controller because we're in the player controller so mm -hmm. that what we do need is we need to know that this enhanced input local player system is part of the blueprint that we're actually dealing with so i need to get hold of a reference to self Press the self and plug that in there right now. Theoretically, that means the mapping context has been uh, added to the controller like it was being done previously in the character, but we're doing it in our own uh, controller. And I'm going to check that that's working. It's worth, yeah, hey, there we go. It's worth checking this at every stage. Okay, so let's go through the others, uh, the other bits one by one. This means I can delete this thing. I don't want to get rid of the event begin play. That might be useful later. Um, but I might just delete the comment. There we go. So uh, we're going to do the camera input next. So again, let's disconnect and prove quickly. Although you can't see it, I'm moving the mouse around and nothing's happening. I can still use um, the move and the jump. Uh, so in here I need in fact I'm gonna take all of this put it across because what we want is that event. So this event is the thing that responds to player input through the mapping context. Now it's not hooked up at the moment um because uh, so there is a, a small issue. You might have noticed that this is, uh, realized this is going to happen. When I move this in here, this is doing, uh, controlling your uh, uh, pitch inputs. Uh, actually, let's come in and show you the, the issue. So if I compile, it's going to fail compilation because when it says target itself, that's the wrong kind of target because it needs to be a target of the type of third person player character. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a reference to the controlled pawn. So get control. And here we do need to do a cast because we need to know it's the right kind of thing. 
And incidentally, this is a place where you could um, differentiate between different pawns that you might be uh, controlling. So if you've got a car and a person, you do a test here. And if you do, if it passes one test, you do one thing. If it passes another test, you do a different thing. Uh, it might be better to handle that using different, um, <coughs> excuse me, input contexts, these things, the mapping contexts which is the uh, preferred way of doing it, but for small things, you probably just differentiate in here. Uh, compile. It's not compiling still because I haven't plugged the wires across. And again, we're going to test. And yes, we've got luck again. Uh, so back in, we're nearly there. Let's say we've done that bit so we can delete this whole thing um i'm going to copy both of these at once now because i know i'm going to want both of them and um, just going to point something out here so this is get control rotation target is pull and this is going to mysteriously change as we um, paste across because and now in here it says Get control rotation, target is controller, and it's recognized we moved it into a different kind of entity and has sorted itself out, which is very nice of it. We do still need to do the uh, the casting, though, uh, and grabbing the, uh, the control pawn. So I'm just going to copy and paste that. Uh, so we just make sure we're doing that check. Actually, that was done. Uh, go up to that. Uh, I've got to uh, meet and make that box encompass that. Um, that's connected through to the second one. Just checking this. So I get to control us, so that's fine. But I still do need to plug that thing, which is a reference to the. To both the phones. Um, similarly, I'm going to break both those. Uh, no, we can all of it. There's also some space to put a couple of instances of this in. Um, if I could be bothered, I could change that so that it you both uses the same reference. But I don't need to. Now, this was a very blithely just disconnected those. I need to check that's on started and completed i believe i should have checked that before i did it uh, connect those across uh, let's just gonna expand that box out a bit let's go and theoretically And what's going to be conflicting? Let's get rid of all that. And hopefully, if we've done everything right, we can move around, we can walk, and we can jump. So that's moved all the controls through from the third person character, which is now completely empty of anything in terms of controls. It's still got all the, um, the components that it needs. Um, the, the skeletal mesh and animations, etc., and the camera and things. So all that is still there, but uh, the third-person player is uh, is fine. And uh, that's how you refactor the template so that it's doing things as I believe they should be done, which is that control is is handled in the controller. And that's it from me for now.